Welcome back to The Daily Poem here on the Close Reads Podcast Network. I'm David Kearns. Today's poem is by Robert Penn Warren. He was an American poet, novelist, and literary critic who lived from 1905 to 1989. He won the Pulitzer Prize in 1947 for his novel All the King's Men and the Pulitzer Prize for Poetry in 1958 and 1979, thus making him the only person to have won the Pulitzer Prize for both fiction and poetry. The poem that I'm going to read today is called Heart of Autumn. It goes like this. Wind finds the northwest gap. Fall comes. Today, under gray cloud scud and over gray wind flicker of forest in perfect formation, wild geese head for a land of warm water. The boom. The lead pellet. Some crumple in air. Fall. Some stagger, recover, control, then take the last glide for a far glint of water. None knows what has happened. Now, today, watching how tirelessly V upon V arrows the season's logic, do I know my own story? At least they know when the hour comes for the great wing beat. Sky strider, star strider, they rise in the imperial utterance which cries out for distance quivers in the wheeling sky. That much they know, and in their nature know the path of pathlessness, with all the joy of destiny fulfilling its own name. I have known time and distance but not why I am here. Path of logic, path of folly, all the same. And I stand, my face lifted now skyward, hearing the high beat, my arms outstretched in the tingling process of transformation, and soon tough legs with folded feet trail in the sounding vacuum of passage, and my heart is impacted with a fierce impulse to unwordable utterance towards sunset at a great height. So there is a a lot going on in this poem. I say that every now and then on the show, but it's true. I remember reading it for the first time and getting stuck on the fourth line. The first stanza and the fourth stanza have a very different form than the second, uh, third, fifth, and sixth stanzas. There are four lines that get, um, there are four fairly consistent lines, but the last bit of the first stands in that fourth line, the uh, idea kind of shifts on me because you get the boom, the lead pellet. And I remember reading it and thinking, wait, what just happened? Which I suppose is how it's supposed to be, right? Because the lead pellet, pellet is a, uh, people shoot geese with pellet guns. So the boom, the lead pellet. So you've got, they're flying in perfect formation, wild geese head for the land of warm water, the boom, the lead pellet. So out of nowhere, the shot comes. Some of the geese fall, some stagger, recover, control. Really nice use of the word control as one line there in the second line of the next stanza, as if the word control is resetting the poem. I I really like that. None of them knows what has happened, and yet, despite this violence against them, they know what their existence is for. I love I love the little bits, you know, in in the third stanza, he uses sky strider as its own line as well. You know, star strider. They rise in the imperial utterance, quivers in the wheeling sky. There's this sort of science fiction thing introduced here that they they're they're like spaceships up there in the sky taking fire. Um, there's an adventure going on, and he explores this difference between um, he and the geese. Who the geese know what their purpose is for. You know, he he can tell distance and time, a thing that the geese can't tell. But the geese have a sense of purpose. You know. And there is in him some sort of longing to be transformed into the sky strider, to be transformed into this, this adventuring uh, science fiction spaceship, this space, this spaceman, this adventurer, to be able to fly toward the sunset at a great height, even if you can't speak. In their nature, they know the path of pathlessness. And this is something that he finds himself sort of longing for. And then you go back to that word control because, you know, that word sets a part by itself. It seems to reset the poem. You know, it, it, it changes what we expect out of the, the form of the poem. But also it's set apart because it's this question of, you know, uh, neither, neither the poem, the, the poet, the man, nor the geese have control over what happens to them. And for the geese, there's a sort of 
they don't need to know. But for the man, for the poet, it sort of a, creates a sort of a psychological crisis, a crisis of the inner life, a crisis of purpose. And so it's a poem about control that sets the word control apart, that resets the poem through the word control. And yet neither of the characters have or ever can have control. And so the poet, you know, has to cope with that as we all do. And that seems like, you know, <laughs> the right theme or, or a correct theme, or I don't know, how, I shouldn't say a correct theme, but uh, a theme worthy of contemplation in autumn. So with that in mind, I'll read it one more time. This is Robert Penn Warren's Heart of Autumn. Wind finds the Northwest gap. Fall comes. Ooh, I just realized something I've never realized before. Don't take this out, Logan. <laughs> I love that. Wind finds the Northwest gap, comma, fall comes. He's telling us what's about to happen to the geese. Fall's coming. They're going to fall. Never noticed that before when reading this poem. How did I never notice that? Anyway, going back to the beginning, I'll read it again. Wind finds the northwest gap. Fall comes. Today, under gray cloud scud and over gray wind flicker of forest, in perfect formation, wild geese head for a land of warm water. The boom. The lead pellet. Some crumple in air. Fall. Some stagger, recover control, then take the last glide for a far glint of water. None knows what has happened. Now, today, watching how tirelessly V upon V arrows the season's logic, do I know my own story? At least they know when the hour comes for the great wing beat. Sky strider, star strider, they rise, and the imperial utterance, which cries out for distance, quivers in the wheeling sky. That much they know and in their nature know the path of pathlessness, with all the joy of destiny fulfilling its own name. I have known time and distance, but not why I am here. Path of logic, path of folly, all the same. And I stand, my face lifted now skyward, hearing the high beat, my arms outstretched in the tingling process of transformation, and soon tough legs with folded feet trail in the sounding vacuum of passage, and my heart is impacted with a fierce impulse to unwordable utterance towards sunset at a great height. This has been The Daily Poem. Thanks so much for listening. I'll be back tomorrow with another poem for you.